Okay, so as I was mentioning earlier, um, this is Lauren's project from the two-figure pose from last year. Just like uh, we did the exact same process as this year. Uh, we set up the two models, uh, built a sort of uh, rough set around them, and uh, and then she's expanded on it. Although this is fairly similar to the to the space. Uh, but of course, we didn't have these kind of books, and there was no um, torch uh, type of thing back here. And of course, there's no floating like flame um, in real life. Um, so, but what we're gonna what we're gonna work on is trying to problem solve on how to integrate the fire, this kind of floating fire, within the rest of the pose and trying to be visually uh, consistent with that, as well as uh, yeah, working with here and here. Because right now, it looks a little bit like the fire is just kind of like stuck on, right? So we want to ask ourselves, why does it, why does it feel like that? Like wh what, what is making it, it seem um, kind of like pasted on? Right. Uh, Lauren. I, I think with the one that's floating between our hands, isn't it true that the light source can't be darker than the reflected light? So for sure it's a bit lighter than the actual fire. Yeah, so, so, so the first thing is, is value, right? So if we have this bright, you know, if, if just like you said, if it's really bright on her shirt and around here, but then the light source itself, like you were saying, is darker than what the affected area, then this would, this would actually, you know what this is implying right now? This would imply that there's some kind of like fire sculpture in front of some light source that is mm -hmm. casting a light on her. So that's why it's making it look like this is flat, mm -hmm. right? For exactly the reasons that you were just mentioning. So the, the first question is a value related question. Right now, if you're working in, in color, you want to you want to ask yourself the, the, the question: What is it? Does it need to get lighter or darker? And then do you want to ask yourself: Does it get warmer, cooler, greener, bluer, etc.? So oftentimes, what seem to be color issues, many times are value issues. Right? There there is some. Uh, there, there are some color considerations though that we do want to take into account. Meaning that if we have this really warm light here, then that's going to have a very big impact on the temperature of the shirt, which we're starting to. So wherever that light is affecting, it's going to warm that area up. And, and we've got all these sort of cooler, cooler shadows and as it gets darker, it gets cooler. But so we, we want to find that transition from lighter, warmer, sort of uh, yellows, yellows and reds, and then going towards the, the blues. Now, when that can be challenging uh, to not go green in the midtone, that's why you typically will find as it goes to a more orange-yellow, goes more purplish, and then it goes more bluish, right? So you kind of skip the green. Um, not to say that you can't find some areas that, that have some green tones. Um, we, would, we would expect to find more warms on the light parts of the shirt for that exact reason, right? So we have this really warm light source that is affecting the the uh, areas that are illuminated. So like even on the side of, it, of, his, of his head, you've, you've got that there, but, but on the hair, right? So you see how the hair kind of feels a little bit cut out. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get a little lighter there and warm that up a bit. Um, and then this is another example where we have this fire uh, which compositionally, I think we need to, to darken that down. So first value, right? On your study here, I think you actually have a, 
a little bit more successfully solved on your on your study. But can can you guys see how this whole thing is uh, more toned down, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a candle lantern is sort of more in the distance. Right? So it's a little, a little darker. Um, and then the glow around it is not going to be blue. It's going to be more orange. Right? So we're going to need to warm up the immediate areas around and also darken the flame itself. Um, other city even seems like the dark in the wall more than I did. Yeah, I would, I would go with more of the, yeah this this arrangement that you've got here. Also with the column, mm -hmm. how it, the column the value the, the the value in the column looks better here than it's here. I think it maybe we need to we need to warm again warm up the lights so the lights, and maybe just push the whole thing back a little bit here and so you, you, you essentially how you how you problem solved it like this I think is a little bit better I was trying to combine this and the picture because they are different in some cases and I wasn't sure if my I didn't see certain things on yeah and that's one of the challenges is that when you have multiple sources to work with when you have uh, various references, you can easily gonna get pulled in one direction or another. Like case in point, the reason why we ran into the to the fire issue is that we are looking at this as a reference, and this is this is good fire reference, but it's not entirely applicable to our our pieces like just the fire, right? Because we need we need to be a very bright light source. This this other one you have actually is more applicable. So because it's a really like bright center, but then, but then we get all these um, oranges and, and reds. And so if you kind of combine the, this information set, uh, this for like the center value and then, it, and, and, uh, and then as it goes out, then it would become more like, like this. Then we can, stay consistent with our value color study and use that information. But that's why, that's why this is so important because this gives us an overall problem solving the like, template for where to go. And wherever, whenever we feel like we're starting to veer off course, we go back to this. We say, how did we solve it here? Does it, does it look good here? Or you know, fill in the blank. It looks like the forehead is extending a little bit too high. So we need to just bring that down a little and then you can increase the drama of it by, by darkening it as it goes up, just like you have in the study a little bit more, as well as um, really playing up that light hitting the underplane of the chin. Okay. Let's have a look here. Kind of like what you've done in the study here. We're not seeing it as much in this reference, um, but I think it could still it'd still work. Okay, so do you have a clean brush somewhere in here? Oh, um, yeah. all those are clean at the bottom. Okay. Well, those are not clean. Oh, gotcha. But these are cool. Thanks. Sure. So I'm gonna. And oil out the this little area. So again, if you're oiling something out, just make sure that it's dry. Right. Sometimes what I like to do, if, if there's just not enough real estate on the computer screen for your, your references, just print them out and create a wall that you can look at because it's, it's true, you run out of space so quickly on the, on the screen. Or get like a giant monitor to, to connect with your computer and throw them up on the, on the, the second monitor. But, you know, that's 
costs money. Mm-hmm. Although I, I do have a 27 inch, just, just regular old monitor that anybody's welcome to, to use. It's been sitting in my studio for like months. <laughs> so the center of the this like flame here basically needs to be the brightest part of the entire piece. And then we're going to want to see how the, the, oh, this is just not painted yet, right? The mm-hmm. sleeve part, yeah. All of this would be secondary. Right? So it would either be as bright as it, if it was a kind of more blown out or just a step darker than what's in the middle of, the, of this flame. You can also afford to um, paint a little bit thicker in those areas where you have the lights. Now this is uh, kind of supposed to be this kind of floating magical flame, right? So I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of, I don't know, character or something. And then from there, I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow and a little, little bit of the red. Actually, what I'm going to what I'm going to do uh, now before working more into this is I'm going to just create kind of a glow around it. So, including see that this um, kind of garment next to it. We're gonna have to fuzz that out with just this kind of warmer, warmer glow. We're kind of glazing on top like I'm doing right now. You can afford to push it a little further than you need to and then you take a, 
a clean dry brush and you kind of wipe away. Which, th this thing? Yeah. It's probably somewhere, but you don't need it. You have enough, you have enough material to go off of. Cool. So, what, what were you going to say? Oh, it's just the form, um, the hands, actually, I had dancy pose for the hands, so I don't have what oh, right. happens to the fabric when that happens. Do you have the reference for the hands? True. For, yeah. Okay, um, I mean, I don't need them right now, but that, yeah. Um, I figured they're very blown out and they're on my phone. Uh -huh. Well, you can use what I'd recommend is you use the value color from this reference and then use the position like of the other hands for the construction. Okay. Right? That's the whole that's the whole thing, right? You see how see how that can fit together? The design construction rendering, right? We already have the design worked out with and all of the big picture relationships here. Now we're like, okay, shoot, we need to, the hands are in a different position, um, but we need to be able to convince the viewer that those hands are, feel, you know, realistic and structural. So we use the other reference for the structure of it. But then if those references aren't as good for color value, then we go to this one for, for color value. We put the information sets together. Okay, you see how I'm just kind of fuzzing this out mm -hmm. along the edges so it's not a hard edge? Okay, I'm just, just creating a bit of a kind of glow around it. Now, now I'll go back to the actual fire part. Should one treat a fire like hair? In a similar way. Not really. Kind of. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, wet in the wet. Oh. <laughs> well, there's many things that, that, that are good to, to, to work with. Right but yeah, I would say so. Okay. Gen generally. But there are instances where glazing back over it can still be useful. Yeah, well, any wet in the wet, it's kind of hard to get that kind of brightness. Uh, you just have to really control your value in your, in your brushes, right? So, if, mm -hmm. so if, if you're working on a very light area of the painting, regardless if it's fire or just the highlight on the uh, highlights on the forehead or etc., you need to have a clean brush and you need to start with the, your, start with your lightest color that you're going to use and then just really slowly add other colors into that because it'll get too dark too fast very quickly. Mm. So yeah, in this case, we're essentially just using pure cad, cad yellow and some nickel yellow and, uh, and a bit of this uh, cad red light. Honestly, cad yellow light would be even better for this, uh, but we can still make this work. Some alizarin, so it's kind of darker, darker, like intense red. Underneath it is. Is there dogs outside? What is that? Oh. <laughs> I 
I'm, I'm going a little bit more for like a swirl. Rather than just kind of like a flame, it's, you know, so it's like this epicenter of it and it's like going up, but it's kind of swirling and going around. Mm. Notice how I'm switching back and forth with my brushes. Actually, I should go to this one because I'm, I'm not muddying up my really light brush. So that, that's important in terms of maintaining your values so that you're having good brush control. You get these little like, sparks. Flying off. And I think we need a little bit more glow down here. So we're, we're starting to get somewhere with this. So now, now it's, it's starting to feel more like this is the, the, the light source. Um, right now, right now this is distracting, mm -hmm. right? So you'd, you'd probably want to, probably want to get something down here sooner rather than later because no matter what you do here, it's gonna it's gonna look like it's not right until until you get something down here. Because right now this is the, the pure white, and so it's gonna it's gonna, <laughs> gonna throw that off. Yeah, notice how as soon as I cover that up, it it already seems a little better. But then these areas that are right next to the the flame. We want to uh, get that same kind of warmth, this warm light, right? Dress here. I I need to get a different brush. This, this one. So this dress is is war is warm to begin with. The top of it, you know, will get lighter and warmer. So if it's already like red, it's gonna get like super red for just the little the little tops where, it's, where the light is hitting it.
And then as it gets darker, it'll get cooler, sort of more purple, see, just like you've, you've gotten there. Right, does that make sense? You see how this, this is starting to look more like it's being affected by this particular light, being yeah. that it's a very warm light. I'm not wholly sure how her arm down would affect either her skirt or the barrel, though. Oh, this right here? Yeah. Um, I can, so the only, only thing I could think of is whether or not it's casting a shadow on the barrel. That's the thing I would wonder about, is if there's any cast shadow right here. Um, it's not gonna really affect this because th this is being affected by the light, by this light. So it's, we, don't, it's, it's, we don't have to worry so much about like reflected light or, or whatnot, because, because it's already being affected by the direct light. And you're gonna wanna work more on this this scarf here, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, you know, that, that needs another little, little pass. Okay. Um, and let's see. Let me just show you here on the, Chin. Oh, sorry, the jawline. The, the chin looks a little, a little bit too small, like compressed. Like we need, we need to make the chin a little bigger here. It's, okay. It feels a little too small. Have... This is mostly the face. Okay. Let's see. But that picture was going out. Yeah, and and the color is really the color is not great on. Mm -hmm. Basically, the areas where you're seeing the, the light bouncing up, you want to go with this really warm glow, warm temperature light. So that's what I'm, what I'm trying to show with, with that. Mm 